So welcome to the first of the advanced techniques. I'm going to start out with a, uh, a little kind of an easy one to start out and that's uh, cut out text. So I've loaded up a recent a client video that I've made and uh, let me if I just tilt to that. As you can see, that's quite the edit. This is a music video for a, a an up and coming artist in the UK called Scott Comanche. Uh, he's brilliant. He's absolutely wild. And some of the ideas he has are just, yeah, he comes to us and he's like, right, I'm looking for this, this, this. And you're like, right, how are we going to make that work? Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a smattering of him. Um, yeah. So he wanted to start in his hot tub with his little dog. Little, He's called Dave the dog, gorgeous. He's called Scott Comanche because he has Native American heritage. Uh, I'll just show you something very quick. Look at these keyframes here. Uh, so we started on this little bit with him zoomed in and then we zoomed it out. Let me play it back. That was just a little bit to uh, to reveal the horse. Um, we're actually going to emulate something that is in this scene where he's in a boxing ring, uh, getting uh, getting beaten up, uh, as it were. And that's the element that we're looking for. The song is called Forrest Gump Funk uh, and I do what I want now. It's all very much the fact that he just literally does what he wants. That's his character. And we're going to emulate uh, this bit. Uh, if you look here, this text graphic here. It was just a really good way to just, just to break it up a little bit before we moved on. Because once he's been in there, we then uh, went all the way out and all of a sudden he's on quad bikes and it just, it's, it's such a fun video. Uh, if you, if you're that way inclined, have a look for Forrest Gump Funk uh, and uh, a little shout out to him because he's brilliant. And those are his, uh, are his socials. Uh, we used uh, Premiere Composer with a lot of this to bring up the text, uh, play that end. Oh, we used Funk again there, but uh, black and white it. All this was done in just little, click, uh, little clicks in Premiere Composer. Brilliant. As I said earlier in the course, I use a lot of these techniques professionally all the time. So anyway, let's uh, get to the Funk bit. That's what I want to emulate. So let's open up our own edit and let's carry on. And here we are back in our own edits. Uh, but yeah, OK, it seems a little bit more sedate after uh, a little bit of Scott Comanche. So what we need is some video so we can uh, put some text on top. And uh, rather than using all the pizza stuff, let's uh, let's jump into Motion Rain and see what stock footage we can get. And I'm thinking um, maybe. Oh, that looks quite nice. What's that? Let's just mute that for now and play that back. Quite uh, that looks quite nice. Where is that a aerial view of what? I'd love it if this was a bit bigger. Shall we uh, tilt it out? Area view of an autumn forest. Well, we could do that and bring up uh, the word forest. That'd be quite good. Yeah, let's get that. OK, so we're now downloading it and it will download the video and then it will be imported over to here into the motion array area. Obviously, we've got the cooking with a smile and the, uh, the preparing homemade pizza there. That's a typo. And right, yeah, that's in good. I haven't sped any of that up. It came down that quickly. And as you can see, this is aerial view of an autumn forest. We can see it's actually 29.97 frames per second, but that's no problem. Premiere just deals with it. It's, it's great like that. And this is also, if we mouse over that, that's a 4K 
3840 by 2160 that's fine it's 4k footage but it will place it in there at the right size and yeah it's uh, set it to scale 50 percent if you have any problems with regards to that and scaling sizes and all that if you right click and uh, set to scale set to frame size you don't want to scale to frame size just always set to frame size i think i've touched on that before but just in case i haven't right so let's have a quick look at this video oh that's nice isn't it yeah okay right so we're going to put some text over here and what we want is we want to just have this being seen in the text so let's write some text so quite simply we grab the type tool and click in i'm just going to write forest don't worry about the size of the text for now uh how do you spell forest is it just one r i think it is two r's is forest gump isn't it forest gump funk ah there you go it's all meant to be and okay so this is obeying the last piece of text that i was playing with in here so it's impact it's actually in the forest gump funk i was playing with that before uh so first and foremost i want to center it uh so that's centered alignment i also want to center it in the screen and uh go for middle as well so it's top and bottom now it's we're a little bit squashed up so i'm actually gonna put that to zero good that's fine by me and uh, yeah I'm just going to scale this down a little bit not too much because I want to check uh, what font I want to use um, it's always good when you do stuff like this um, you properly uh, get that you get the right font style that you want to be able to cut out and the best is something kind of chunky um, so obviously something like interstate it's, it's not really chunky enough um, impact is a really good one for that but if we scale if we scroll down and have a look no wester no is actually good for that it's it's quite uh, yeah let's use something else purely because um we've used that a lot uh and that's not right i want something quite i don't know quite quite simple but but effective um should we no that's that's not good do you know what i'm gonna go with another one of my favorites and that's nexa bold i'm gonna do all caps and you see how it, it was best to just get the font that we want first before we yeah before we start to move it around and good happy with that so i'm gonna go back to my selection key and let's just drag this out for the whole of the clip first good so we have our text and we have our forest behind it good so what we do now is we want to go into our effects and we're actually going to be searching for something that is quite prevalent in after effects what it's called it's called a track mat uh, and there it is track mat key and uh, mat as you can see is m a t t e like our color mat that we go on here and the track and the key uh, kind of explain what happens. So track is to track something. So you're tracking something. So something will be reading from something else. And key is very similar to the likes of color key. So, you know, like chroma key, when you uh, do something on a white, uh, on a green background, and then you take that all out, that's called color keying. Uh, and yeah, that's what that is doing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this and we're gonna drag this onto the video clip okay nothing's happened just yet because uh we need to tell it what to do so as you can see we've in our effects controls we have our track mat key right here and mat is alpha now what we want to do is we want to tell the mat what to read from now the video clip which is where we're here is video one but the text is video two so you drop down and you say, I want to read from video two. And all of a sudden, straight away, boom, done. So if we play that back now, the video is being read just through that text. Looks good, doesn't it? Now what we can do, I mean, that's it, done. What we can do is we can kind of make this a little bit more, I don't know, maybe a little bit more interesting. So what we, what I want to do is I want to scale up so that's not scaling quite right because it's reading but 
that's okay, but it's not getting to what I want to do. What I want to do is because this video is flying, I want to fly through this and out into the forest. So rather than using our vector motions, what we're going to do is we're going to put a simple basic 3D perspective on here and I'll show you why. So now we've got our text on this uh, section uh, and in the effects controls, we've got nothing really other than the basic 3D. Remember, the track map key is on the video below. OK, so what we're going to play with is we're going to play with distance to image and maybe a little bit of positioning, but we shall see. So let's play that through. And as you can see, the video is playing behind the text and only coming through the text. I love this effect and it can be used really well to establish something at the beginning of a video or to uh, to show a, a change in, uh, in 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 location. Let me just clear this up. I've just restarted my system. Uh, so, yeah, we like that. Now, what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit more, I don't know, just a little bit more interesting. Just looking at that as we move, that kind of, we tilt on the actual footage. Can you see that? If I just get rid of uh, that for now. At this point, we kind of tilt over and we look down into the forest. So at that point, what I want to do, uh, by the way, uh, my shortcut for enabling and uh, disabling uh, tracks is zero on my number pad. So at that point, I want to reveal everything. Now, what I could do is I could pull this back, add a little fade out, and it doesn't really work. And that's because of uh, the tracking that we're doing. So fading doesn't quite work. However, the reason why we've added the basic 3D, which is over here, is to to animate and come in through the text. You'll have seen it in, in a number of things, maybe some Hollywood films and stuff, and that's what we're going to do. So that's why we've added the basic 3D. And in the distance to image, if we start playing around with that, which is what we're going to be affecting, it doesn't really do anything. Why is that? That is because if you look in the essential graphics, basic 3D is under the text. Okay? So if we grab this basic 3D and put it Above the text, everything affects everything below. So if we now start doing it, if we let go, we're further because the actual number is higher. So that's further away from the text. If we reset that and bring it in and let go, there we are. It's 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 a bit annoying, but it's it's a little bug in this system that it doesn't kind of hold on. You've got to kind of affect the number and then let go. So as long as you know that, it's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back a little bit. Uh, and by the way, bear in mind that uh, you can still key your position. The reason why I say that is because we're going to turn on a keyframe for both position and distance to image, just in case if we get really close and we need to move the position ever so slightly. So if we move this up a little bit and let go. Um, we're just a little bit further on and we're just going to start to drag this down and keep letting go. And that looks about right. That's where we kind of where we want to be. Um, in fact, let me just undo that for now. Let's try and come through here, right in the E that looks something at least close to center where we want to uh, come through. So if I start dragging that down, I've gone far too far. Uh, let's go about there. Okay, we're getting there somewhat. It's very much trial and error this. Let go. Okay, we've gone upside down now. So, okay, how does that look? We are upside down again. Okay, so let's drag it over to the side a little bit. Good, we're getting there. I just need to kind of keep playing with this to try and get to where we want. Okay, that looks like it's where we want. That's at minus 102. Let's go to minus 100 and check. Okay, let's go to minus 98. I can't see anything. Go again, minus 95. 
Okay, we just got a little bit there. So let's go to minus 96. Yeah, we're out. I think is that a little, I think that's a little bit there. Let's go to minus 96.5, hit enter, looking at the left hand side of the frame and we're out. Cool. So that's what we want. So I'm going to keyframe these, right click and you know, ease out and ease in. A lot of videographers uh, and editors do Bezier and all that. I like to have full control. Let's play that back and see how that goes. Good. You see how that works? Nice. I think it goes a little bit too fast. So I'm going to bring this back and let's take this first handle, come all the way back and let's start it and see how it works. And we then start to slowly grow through. Here we go into the forest, just as we start to tilt down and look good. I like it. It's good. What do I want to change? Well, first and foremost, I do want to put a fade on, but how do I do that? Well, we're not fading the text because the text is now a mat. Although it can be edited, it's now a mat. So what we want to do is we want to fade the video before it or below it even. So I'm going to highlight those handles and just shift D. And now if I press play, <laughs> and because it's slow, I'm going to give it a slow fade in. So let's bring it back and play that back. Forest. I like this. Looks really good. And then we start to slowly fade in right through. And then we're established. And you see, because we've got this clip, say you're using other clips. Uh, this is a bit of a bug with the uh, motion ray at the moment. You need to close it and then open it again. And then it kind of comes back. Um, but let's go, let's look for that forest again. And you could get some more clips, you see. That one's done. That's good. Is that another? That's over the top. Okay. I think that that looks like the same colors as this. So let's get that downloaded. And this is just to show you how this works with more than one clip in as much as the reason why you're using it and why you're bringing in this effect and how it would establish uh, what you're looking to do. Say you're on a, you're, you're, you're on a travel um, vlog and this is the kind of thing that you're doing. Um, yeah, getting a second clip in there uh, will show you just how we establish all that. Uh, it's not putting it into there as well, is it? No. Okay. So we are downloading my downloads nearly there. And so that was set to import in once it had downloaded. So now we're coming in, importing files, and I'm guessing that's probably our next clip. Good, cool. So let's grab that and drag that into the timeline as well. And as we come through, that's established. If we then bring this in, I'm just overwriting as we go and we play the whole thing through. Let's just give you a nice quick pre-render so we can give you it at full resolution. And you know me, clear in and out because it just affects my, it just, <laughs> it upsets my eyes and play that through. So we now have that text with the track mat cutting through and only reading the video below it. And as we then animate through, we establish everything and then we cut to the next bit. And that is such a simple way to cut out text in your video and you can have so many ways to use this. And by the way, don't forget, you don't necessarily have to um, grow in, you know, you don't have to zoom it in like we, like we've done. You could do anything you like. You, you could, uh, you could get rid of the distance to image bit, leave that there. You could get rid of the position keyframing. And what we could do is we could set, um, a keyframe there and have that all the way to the beginning 
and maybe move it a little bit. I really hope that they get rid of this bug. Um, let's create a new keyframe. I will move that there and then move it to the end and move it over there. And it could just be a simple passing through. You can keyframe this however you wish. That basic 3D is a really important one to remember because it just it just works better with the quality output. If you were to scale, we could quite possibly have anti-aliasing. Remember when we touched that earlier on the course and you've got like jagged edges all the way around. Also, I mean, you could play with the tilt and the swivel. I love the swivel in basic 3D. So you could uh, get rid of um, that position keyframe, refresh that into the middle, and you could start at minus 88. And let's just, for ease, go to plus 88, pull that out, um, add spec uh, specular highlights. And as we play that through, uh, we might need to pre-render it because Premiere Pro just hates me right now. But as you can see, it's not a massively CPU intensive uh, effect. And effectively, we're, we've got two effects on here. We've got the track mat and we've got the basic 3D swivel. But just in that little thing, we can, we've, we've, we've got it. It's perfect. You know, that could be the way that you're looking to, to, uh, to introduce it or thought just thought there as we saw that there we get rid of that keyframe now if we add a keyframe and get rid of that keyframe and on this keyframe we go to reset we could again if we need to pre-render and clear in and out and play that back we just start a little bit off the side. And then of course these are linear, so it just starts and stops, but this could give you the nice way of bringing it in. I mean, I prefer the first time, but just to show you the different ways in which we can use this cutout text. When used properly and sparingly, it's, it's a great technique and it's used right the way through the industry.